Okay, good day class. Today, we're going to have Dakatipunan. This is actually one of our topics for midterm. And then, after this one, I'm going to send you the continuation of this topic. And in between, it would be uh, supplemented with other videos. The first two I sent to you. I'm going to give you more with a task so that uh, you'll be able to see really what happened uh, in the Katipunan beginning from the formation of the group up to the discovery of the Katipunan. So here, I know you're very familiar with the topic because you had this one back in elementary and when you are in high school, but we're going to look in depth about what really happened and try to see what went wrong and then try to assess the organization. Okay, so to begin with, here, I have a question. The who, if you are familiar with these people, you have Andres Bonifacio. I know it's very, he's very familiar. Then you have uh, Emilio Jacinto, okay? Just an overview, the two of them were actually known as the Twin souls of the Katipunan. And we have one more. Emilio Aguinaldo. Uh, the, the significant role also played by Emilio Aguinaldo. And then, how come the name of Aguinaldo come into its contribution or for, 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 for the formation of the Katipunan? So let's start with how they started. Okay, before that, you have here. That is enough thought Bonifacio after the shocking news of Rizal's exile to the Pitan. Um, Rizal class was actually uh, a person who, whom uh, 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 Bonifacio looked as a model. Okay? He even thought of using the name of Rizal to be a password of one of the levels of the Katipunan. That's how Aguinaldo see and then look up to Rizal at this time. So, he was exiled, Rizal was exiled in the Pitan, and then take note that the Katipunan was already formed during this time. Okay? Insurrection. Del Pilar wrote in La, La Solidaridad, it is the last remedy especially when the people have acquired the belief that peaceful means to secure the remedies for evils proved futile. It's because they at first thought na Having those movement, okay, we have the propaganda movement, the reform movement. What they actually aim here is from the word reform, they only wanted to have changes, mga pagbabago kong baga. They wanted to make the Philippines even same or equal with Spain. They even asked in one of their objectives that Philippines be a province of Spain because they wanted na how the Filipino be treated the same with the Spaniards here in our country at that time. They wanted to have Filipinos to have access to education the same access with those other uh, Spaniards okay, or mestizos at that, at that period. So basically, they wanted to have reform, but what is in those movements, the reform movement that is different from the Katipunan? One thing for sure is that Katipunan wanted total freedom. They wanted to be free, to be separated from Spain. Not just a province, not just a part of it, but really to be free from the mother colony. Their goal was transformed from assimilation to separation and then independence. So that's what I said a while ago, to assimilate. Basically, they wanted to adapt the existing and trying to embrace the change and that they wanted to be a part of it. But then later on, they have thought na it becoming too much to handle, to bear for the Filipinos. So they have thought of separation. And that separation would lead to our independence. That's where Katipunan then came into being. So the founding of Katipunan, they had started founding the group. It was night of July 7, 1892. It is in Ascaraga Street. In, in the house of one of their uh, member, which is now in Claro Emresto, okay? It is, uh, it is 
also known as the Katipunan for uh, for short or for, 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 for brevity is KKK or kataas-taasang, kagalang-galangang, katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. Okay? Supreme and most honorable society of the children of the nation. In Spanish, you have there, Suprema e Venerable Asociación de los Hijos del Pueblo. These are the founders. We know that it was uh, Bonifacio who founded the Katipunan. But there are other members who helped him, his friends, who formed the Katipunan. They were Plata, Diwa, Arellano, and Diaz. Okay. Don't worry because I'm also going to share you the 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 the, the, the PowerPoint. Okay. So these are the aims of the Katipunan. The aims of the Katipunan class actually divided into three: political, civil, and moral. Okay. When you say political, they look into the idea of uh, asking for a separation from Spain, and for moral is that. No, the, the, the behavior, the good morals of the Katipuneros or of the Filipinos, that includes hygiene. Okay? And then you have civic, self, health, and defense of the poor and then the oppressed. Okay? So if you're a member, you are guided with these three aims. They also wanted to unite the Filipinos into one solid nation and also to fight for the Philippine independence from Spain. So the Katipunan really prepared the country for an armed revolution to regain the country's lost freedom. So what is important sa Katipunan? Unlike those other movements before, where they only wanted to be treated the same, to be treated equal. Okay? And then, let's have the... Uh, uh, the... the, the the, the bodies of the Katipunan. These are the governing bodies of KKK. Take note that the three governing bodies are different from the three levels of the Katipunan. Okay? These are the three governing bodies. You have the Supreme Council. So, basically, they consist of the President, a Fiscal Secretary, a Treasurer, and a Comptroller. And then followed by the Provincial Council or the Sangguni Ang Bayan. This is for every province. Okay? And then you have the Sangguni Ang Balangay or the Municipal Council. And the last, it's not actually at the bottom, the or co-equal, it's the order. You have the Sangguni Ang Hukuman or the Judicial Council, wherein this council was created to help decide cases in uh, that, that includes treasury among the members and quarrels between them. Meaning, it aims to help members solve their own conflict, not the conflict between the Spaniards or the Filipinos, but to make sure that they keep the peace and the order of the members of the Katipunan so that they can really lay out all their plans smoothly, knowing that members are at peace. Okay? Now, these are the, um, vis uh, the, the, the visual form. If you can see here how they were structured, basically, it is because of the form of membership that they use the triangle method that we're going to discuss later on. So basically, this is how they look like, the order. Okay? And then you have <clears throat> the secret initiation of the Katipunan. It is secret class because it's not actually open to everybody that the recruitment should be publicized. Though they wanted to have members, but it is not done unlike today. Yeah. You have to post something on social media, broadcasting all the things that you wanted them to know, and then you're recruiting them in public, you're giving flyers. It's different in the Katipunan. It's actually an, uh, an, uh, a secret initiation, wherein the recruitment is also done secretly. Okay, how is it done? So a candidate okay, of membership was first blindfolded, and you're asked to enter a secret room. Actually, class, this is usually placed in areas that are far flung from the urban. Some were done in the mountains, caves also, and then they are put in a room, blindfolded, because they are stage man good class, where in, in that particular level, if you pass, then you proceed with the next. Before you reach the final uh, level or the final stage, you are asked if you wanted to continue or not. If you wish not to continue, 
then you will be returned. Okay? You'll ask to go home. That is why it is blindfolded, so you really cannot tell where this group performing their initiation because there are some who are spying on them. So, and then, in the room, there was a table, and in the table, take note of this three symbolic symbol. You have the bolo, and then you also have the skull, and a revolver. The, these three symbolic items, are, uh, they were found on the table, and also with a piece of paper with three questions. So basically, they only ask you these three questions that would help you reflect, really, if you wanted to continue and if you really wanted to become a member of the Katipunan. So what are these questions? The first question is, what was the condition of the Filipinos when the Spaniards came here? So if you're going to read the question and if you're going to look back and reflect to it, then you would say that we are at peace before the Spaniards were doing good. So there's this vision of the country that is peaceful, okay? There's no harm, threatening their safety. The second question, what condition do we have now? That's where you have the comparison then. Because you're going to compare if this, uh, do they have the same condition? If you thought that this is different because now we have the Spaniards and we experienced a view of this, these things that we experience now were things that we didn't experience before when they were not here. And the third question is, what hope do we have in the future? So that would then I uh, give you a conclusion that, okay, I'm going to continue with being a member. I want to become a katiponero because this third question would help you think na, is this the same fate that I'm going to give to my children, to my grandchildren, to the other generation to come? Or I, I, I wanted to make change? Then you will, then you will continue. And then, you will also ask, okay, other than the three questions, if you then wish to proceed, there's a piece of paper, you'll be asking other questions saying that, if you have the strength and valor, you may proceed. If you only, if only your curiosity brought you here, you may go away. If you do not know how to control yourself, you go away. Never will the gates of the highest, most respectable association of sons of the country open for you. So if more of personal lang siya, your intention, then you will ask to leave, not to proceed with your membership. Now, here, a piece of, uh, the, the, the member was also given a test on the history of the Philippines to show that he knew the Spaniard had oppressed the Filipinos because it's not a joke that you're going to become a member. It's your life and your family that is at stake here. So you need to really have a grasp of understanding and knowledge that this is what the Spaniards were doing in our country at that time. So he had to pass that other test on his patriotism, courage, and sincerity. Okay? Then here, the Katipunan membership, they're using the triangle method as I said. Triangle method because this is how it works. Okay? If let's say, for example, A recruit, recruits B and C. It's only A here who knows B and C. B and C, they don't know each other. And B can again recruit D and E. C can also recruit F and G. Same. It's only B here who knows D and E, but D and E don't know each other. That is also to keep the secrecy of the Katipunan or the group. So the farther you are from the top, the more that you don't know who are the other members. But there are ways class that in public, they're able to know who are the members. Usually they have their gestures. Okay? Just put their hand here in their chest with this one, knowing that you are a member if you respond. Okay? Then, they also agreed that they would pay a membership fee that is amounting to one real fuerte, or that is today 25 centavos, and a monthly due of media real, or 12 centavos. That is, of course, to be used as 
a money for financing the, uh, sustaining the katipunan. Okay. So, this is what I said a while ago, the three levels of the katipunan is different. The three levels class, they are different from the governing bodies. Take note of that one. Here, members are then able, uh, they, they will be classified as to the different level. The first grade or the first level, they are known as the katipu, katipon or associate. Every meeting when they were called to, to, to meet, they have to wear a black mask. So, wala pa COVID before, nag-mask na sila na. Karon. Their password was anak ng bayan. So, it's not that uh, easy for you to just join the meeting because they would know if you are a spy or if you're just there for nothing. And they would know if it's really you're a member or not. So, take note that if you are a katipon, your password is anak ng bayan. Not co-flow. Anak ng bayan. And if you're in the second level, you are now a kawal or a soldier. You have to wear a green mask with the password Gomborza. And the third level or the third grade is Bayani or the Patriot. They wore red mask to be, for, for them to be identified belonging to that level with the password when they enter and join the meeting or the assembly, Rizal. So, actually, Class Rizal doesn't have any idea about this, that his name was used by the Katipunan, but it's just that they admired Rizal that much that they even read his works and then able to smuggle some of, a copy, some, some of their copies and then share it to other members. That's how they look in Sal as a model and also even... Uh, Bonifacio admitted na he really admired the work of Rizal and Rizal as a person. He even attended some of the assemblies where Rizal was the speaker. And there, they used Rizal as a password. So, uh, in, in, in your other course, if you're going to enroll in your Rizal class, you will learn that this was also used by the Spaniards in order to, uh, to use against Rizal to associate that Rizal was a member of the Katipunan, but Rizal really did not give any of his permission or confirmation that he was a member. But they had thought, the government thought, na Rizal was a member because his name was there. Okay? And here, I don't know if it's clear, but anyway, I'm going to send you the copy. This is how they look. This is what they wear. Okay? It is actually identified because the mask that they wore, if you are in the first level, take note, you have this outfit, a triangle that is marked in your black mask. There. And then also the picture here showing what a kawal should wear when they were going to attend the assembly. Not only the mask that they wear, but also in their shirt. They have this triangle with the symbol, this symbol. Because this symbol, it means the katipunan. And they are the third grade. That's what they're wearing. Okay? And the Katipunan flag. It evolved, actually. It changes. The first flag here, just the first three Ks. Okay? And it was changed later on to one K that represents the Katipunan only, the, the single K, where we know that the red color symbolizes the blood of the members, the passion that's burning them. And here, the KKK, this stands for the Katastaasang Kagalanggalang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan. But then, the arrangement was changed. Then later on, here you have the flag of the Magdalo faction. Uh, in our next lesson, you know, and it, we will discuss, why do they have this flag? Magdalo faction. Because class Katipunan was divided into two later on ha, of, in, in, in their history. They were divided into two factions, the group of Magdalo and the group of Magdiwang. Magdiwang, this, were the, this was the group of Aguinaldo and, uh, no, I'm sorry, Bonifacio and his followers. And in the Magdalo, the group, the faction of Aguinaldo and his followers. Because there were misunderstandings that happened. We're going to discuss that one when we move on with our next lesson. Because just, just, just an overview, the group of Aguinaldo wanted to make change. 
okay, to to make reforms with 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 the with, with the group. But then of course, the traditional group of Bonifacio wanted to retain the spirit, the concept, the principle of Katipunan. So therefore, they were separated into uh, two factions. And this one, the Magdiwang faction. See the difference? There were similarities. The sun. Take note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were eight rays of the sun because it represents the eight provinces that were first declared to be under martial law of the government, the Spanish government, because they were the one who first revolted against the government also. So they were very significant. These were the eight rays that represents our Philippine flag in our sun. So, if you are asked to draw your flag, dili magmug na o butang o pilaka rays because these are already identified and numbered into eight rays only. Okay? And there, the last flag, the official flag of the Filipinos in 1897. And here, this is how the Katipunero looks like. Diba, mga no? And there, you see familiar faces there. These are our strong and brave Filipino Katipuneros. Then the Katipunan seal and ink. So any communication through a letter, they have to seal that one using this one. This uh, made of stone raid printing press where the Kalayaan was printed. So in the newspaper, they have to put this mark also that telling them that it's a message, it's an article, it's a Con, uh, it's a content from, from, from the Katipunan. And here, an example of a letter of Andres Bonifacio. Then he signed this one, the sign, and their seal to make it official. That really, all communications are actually monitored and then really from person in authority or from any officer. And it is actually an official communication. And here you have the founder. Let's talk about them. Those first three persons that we mentioned a while ago before we begin with our lesson. So Andres Bonifacio, the great Libyan. He was born in Tondo, November 30, 1863, the first child of four, four parents. He was named actually after Saint Andrew, the patron saint of Manila. So Andrew. What was the Andrew? The Andres? Of course, a Filipino man. The, he had three brothers and sisters. Two sisters. Seriaco, Procopio, Esperjona, Troadio, Maxima. Maybe you can make use of this name in the near future when you wanted to have a child. Hmm. Nice name. Esperjona, Troadio, Maxima, Procopio, and Seriaco. Actually, Seriaco and Procopio became his uh, good followers and also defender of the Katipunan. When the Katipunan was split into two, they were those two who defended the retainment and the keeping of the traditional Katipunan, the Magdiwang. Next, you have here, his parents died when he was 14 years old. So you can tell na him being the person growing up at a very young age, exposed to the type of environment we had back then, and then his parents died at a very young age. Let him grow and allows him to become independent. He supported his siblings by selling bamboo canes and paper funds in the city streets. Kanamang sungkod, pamaypay. He also worked as a warehouse keeper in a mosaic tile factory in Santa Mesa. He worked first as a messenger and was promoted as an agent in Fleming and company, but he was transferred to another company for a higher pay. Okay. He started uh, Bonifacio's education in the Guillermo Osmeña School. It's a private school. And he educated himself by extensive reading of good books and also learning Spanish by self-study. So can you do that on your own? So we don't, we don't need online anymore classes because like him, you can do it yourself. You read, and I know you, 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 you can do that. Anyway, it's a lesson we can learn from him. Na on your own, 
can be dependent if you have the interest, if you have the drive, you can learn things on your own. Gregoria de Hiso, the second wife of Bonifacio, trivia class. Okay, I'm sorry. He had a son named Andres also who died because of a small pox. Same thing with what happened to the son of uh, Rizal. Francisco, they named his son Francisco who also died while still a baby. And there was a rumor class about Gregoria de Jesus and, and this brief fashion. Uh, according to some writings, there were uh, those families of Gregoria who are not in favor of Andres. So they said na gitanan daw ni Bonifacio si Gregoria see what love can do to a person we but don't do that Emilio Sinto, the brains of the Katipunan take note, you don't have to confuse yourself with their titles the utak na Katipunan is different from the utak na Himagsikan different from the ama na Katipunan okay Asinto is the brain of the Katipunan also born in Tondo his father died shortly after he was born, so he was adopted by his uncle, Don Jose de Don. Okay, here, a background of him. He studied law in UST, but he was not able to finish. And he also obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in Colegio de San Juan de Letran. Okay? He remained loyal to Bonifacio even up to the last, up to his last breath. He died April 16, 1890. Nine, at a very young age of 23 because of malaria. Okay, here. Actually, class, the, the, the officers, the first election, it was not Bonifacio who was, became immediately, automatically became the Supremo. Because what we thought good in history, he was the only Supremo. He was the famous Supremo, yes, because he founded the Katipunan. But then, there were three elections. The first election, it was Judato Arellano who was the first president of the Katipunan. Then it was followed by Basa. But then, because Bonifacio were really not satisfied with how they worked, he took over and then became the president. And up to the end of the Katipunan, that's why he marked as being the, the famous supreme or the famous president of the Katipunan. But it was in the first election that it was Giudato Arellano elected as the president. The honorary president here, they put the name of Rizal. And Bonifacio was only an auditor, though he helped founded it. In the second election, as I said, Roman Basta was elected as the president, not Bonifacio yet. Bonifacio remained in his position until the time that he was then elected. In the third election, he became the Supremo, Andres Bonifacio, with his members. It was uh, December 1895. So the following year, 1896, that's where we proceed our next lesson, they had the revolution. Okay. Every member of the Katipunan adopted a symbol name. These are the symbolic names. Take note of this one. So, my Pag-asa, Andres Bonifacio, Pinky Ann, Jacinto, Vibora, Ricarte, Magdalo, Aguinaldo. Actually, there were other symbolic names that used by other heroes or the other members. We also have Jumapa, that is for um, Jose Maria Paganiban. We also have Plaridel for Marcelo H. Del Pilar. So they make use of the symbolic name for them not to be identified easily when they were called. So they use that name. As if for the call sign. Okay? And question. Women, are they allowed to join the Katipunan? Yes. It's not exclusive to men. However, the difference and the restriction shows that only those women who are admitted to be a member or to join the Katipunan, wife, daughter, or sister of the Katipunero, that is to ensure the secrecy of the Katipunan. The secret meeting was being held, so what do these female Katipuneros do? They serve as distractors. So what do they do as they distract? Here they, they, 
They pretend that it was just a party. They were singing songs. They were dancing. I don't know if they were doing pole dancing, but they were dancing. So at that time, this were the rules of the Katipunera. But not limited to this. They were also assigned to uh, record keepings for documents. Okay? And then, qualifications for female members. Dapat wife, as I said, daughter, direct ha, ang relationship, sisters, and any close relative of the Katipunero. So not anybody nga mayroon nga unlike sa Katipunero, na they can be recruited using the triangle method, but for women, it's not actually open, limited only to this qualification. Here, the prominent Katipunera. So, of course, you know, Gregoria de Jesus, the wife of Bonifacio. He was called, okay, that's why if you have Buwan ng Wika, we called our muse as La Cambini, si Miss, here, Gregoria de Jesus was called the Lacambini of the Katipunan, the muse, of course, being the first lady, the wife of the founder. The sisters of Rizal, Josefa and Trinidad, there were actually uh, 11 of them. There's only two boys in the Rizal family, Rizal and Pasiano. So of those other women, there were how many? Eight? Nine. Nine women. Nine. Two of them joined the Katipunan. Then you have the famous Melchora Ramos E. Aquino, or known as Tandang Sora, the mother of the Katipunan. So basically, she fed the Katipuneros and nursed them whenever they were one dead. Later, she was arrested by the Spanish authorities and he was exiled in Marianas. Marianas actually is an island separated from the Philippines. Ayun na siya, but part of the Spanish of, uh, territory. Okay. The literature of the Katipunan. Here. Their works. Works of the Katipunan class were published in their official newspaper known as the Kalayaan. Okay? And then, they have the Decalogue. Take note that the Decalogue of the name Deca, that's ten, it serves as a ten commandment of the Katipunan. This Decalogue is actually different from the Cartilia ng Katipunan. The Cartilia was created by Emilio Asinto that also tried to <coughs> that tried to address members of the Katipunan. The Decalogue, these are actually the Katipunan order, the commandment that tells them what they should do if they are now a member of the Katipunan as a group the Cartilia is also known as the teaching of the Katipunan. It's uh, prepared by Jacinto that taught members individually on how they behave, how they act, teaching them good behavior. But this one, the Decalogue is the commandments, the Ten Commandments of the Katipunan. Yes. I'm going to share you notes, what were the contents of the Decalogue and the content of the Cartilla. I'm going to send it to you. Here, the Kalayaa, the newspaper of the KKK. So, they had realized the importance and the value of uh, printed word. So, they have thought that it would be easier to share their thoughts, their opinions, spread their words through printing. They have thought of having that official newspaper. Okay. Here, Isabelo de los Reyes, the printing press that was purchased from him. Okay? He's also a Visayan Katipunero together with those others. Okay. So, si Rizal and the Katipunan. Let's see what is the involvement of Rizal in the Katipunan because again, he was associated by the Katipunan and taught by the Spaniards to be a member of it, of the group. So, they thought that he is also a Katipunero. So, he was arrested. And then, in the trial, one of those evidences that was used against him is that he was a traitor because he was also a Katipunero. Okay? From the time that Rizal was banished in the Pitan, he was exiled in the Pitan for four years. He was devoted himself to helping the people in the Pitan. He actually made a lot of discoveries and contributions. He was exiled in the Pitan, Jose Rizal. He made their discoveries. 
actually they were lizards, frogs that he discovered and he sent the specimen in London in Europe and it was named after him. He also made uh, inventions, brick making machine that could produce bricks, a number of bricks in a day, sulpukan, an invention that he also made in the Pitan where a uh, wood lighter and then he became a teacher there, he practiced medicine there, helping the people of the Pitan and also street lights. Those were only few of the contribution of Rizal and the Pitan. So Bonifacio tried hard to convince Rizal because Rizal really didn't want to join. When Rizal was in the Pitan, he was, uh, Bonifacio asked Pio Valenzuela, Dr. Valenzuela, to talk to Rizal about a revolution, but that is only to tell Rizal about the planned revolution. It came out, the idea that there's a talk between Rizal and the Katiponero, Dr. Valenzuela, during the trial, because they said that Rizal was indeed a Katiponero because he met with Valenzuela. And Valenzuela being a Katiponero, which means Rizal is also a Katiponero. But in that discussion, in conversation, uh, it, they, they only tell na there's going to be a revolution. And then Rizal said na, I'm not going to agree with that because it's not because he's afraid, but it's the idea that they are not prepared. They don't have guns, enough people, no planning. Okay? So Rizal did not approve the idea, but then Venezuela said that whether you say yes or not, we're going to push through with this one. Okay? So being a supporter of Rizal, Bonifacio tried to convince Rizal to become a member of it. That, of course, became one of the problems because it was used again in the trial against Rizal. So he convinced Rizal to support the armed revolt because he believed that Rizal would give his approval that would enable the reluctant illustrados to support the cause of the Katipunan. They wanted Rizal Magud to also share the word with the other illustrados or the other enlightened uh, the other group of people who were the enlightened, one of illustrados, okay, for a while. So basically, they wanted to convince other people to join the revolution. Okay? This is what I said a while ago. Na, Valenzuela went to the Pitan to talk to Rizal and convinced about the revolution to get the approval. But what Rizal said, he believed that it was foolishness to fight the Spaniards without sufficient funds and money. So he instead, the result suggested that the Katipuneros wait for some time before land launching an armed struggle. But of course, Bonifacio is on fire and he cannot wait for that long pa, for some other time. So, even so, he suggested as to why not attract the influential and wealthy Filipinos, so this is what Rizal said. Instead, try to convince those rich Filipinos, the wealthy Filipinos, to help you and support your cause to ensure your fight in the success of the revolution. So Rizal also said, suggested the Katiponeros to approach Antonio Luna and try to talk to Luna and convince Luna to be a military leader because Luna was very good. Okay, uh, here Valenzuela came back to Manila and reported the results of his mission, which is without Rizal approval and with those recommendations and suggestions of Rizal. So there Bonifacio admitted that it would be fatal for them to start a revolution without enough weaponry with which they are going to fight for their enemy. So here Pasiano Rizal, the only brother of Lucy Rizal, supported Bonifacio. And Bonifacio had Rizal's portrait in their headquarters. As I said, and, uh, the, the, the fact that he really looked up to the guy, to Rizal. So, the Katipunan and Japan. Actually, there's this short involvement of the country in the Katipunan. Katipunan actually sought Japan's aid in the coming revolution. So it was in May 1896 that the Katipunan delegation headed by Bonifacio and Asinto, secretly contacted a visiting Japanese naval officer in the cruiser named Congo. 
and the Japanese consul at the Japanese bazaar and requested Japanese aid against the Spain. So, it was Moritaro Takagawa. They met him because Takagawa married a Filipina that helped them and acted as an interpreter in the negotiation. Okay? But then, it really did not show any support from them because of possible conflict of interest. Here, uh, as I said a while ago, the difference between the propaganda movement and the Katipunan is that basically, propaganda only wanted to have reforms. They were the reform movement, they wanted to have change, equality, that Filipinos would be treated the same. Different from the Katipunan. Okay? As I said, the Katipunan is more of an aggressive group. They wanted freedom and independence from Spain. Okay? And here, the aims, the leaders, members, origin, newspapers, and then the, uh, the, the end result. So propaganda failed. Because actually, class, in your basic history class, the failure of the propaganda uh, was credited to different reasons. One of which is that the lack of fund. Second is that they don't really have support from the members because even members have personal issues that they cannot address the need or the issue of the movement or the propaganda in general. So it did not work out. It failed. While for the Katipunan, they were exposed. Okay? Before we end and continue with our next lesson, because our next lesson would begin on the discovery of the Katipunan, and since we speak of the exposure of the Katipunan, like our last discussion during the time of Lapu-Lapu and Magellan, that it is Filipinos who fought against Filipinos, the betrayal of our own race. It's the same thing that happened in the Katipunan. The exposure and discovery of the Katipunan is because also of the Filipino. A Filipino who revealed the secret association that leads to the exposure and later on the end of the Katipunan because of a Filipino. 